Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley bringing you another Commander deck tech. Thank you so much to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing so, you can check out the link in the description below. We will have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description for this video that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you're interested in supporting the channel directly, you can do so by heading on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. So for today's deck tech, I am super excited for this one. It is a new commander from Kaldheim, the standard set, and this one is really spicy. It's one that we've seen for a while. I think it was one of the first commanders that they spoiled from the setter. It was spoiled super early on and I really liked it from the get-go. And the only reason why I didn't build a deck for it sooner and release it is I was really waiting to see what kind of cards for this deck we would see inside the set. So the commander is Magda Brazen Outlaw. It is a legendary creature, dwarf berserker, that gives all of our other dwarves plus one plus oh. And whenever a dwarf that we control becomes tapped, we can make a treasure token, and we can sacrifice five treasure tokens to search our library for any artifact or dragon and put them right into play, and then we shuffle our library. When I first read this card, I didn't even like read artifact. I just read search my library for a dragon and put it into play, and I just forgot the rest. Like I was, I think that is so cool. Tutoring up like a super big dragon and putting it into play, that's dope as heck. I love that. And as I was perusing through the EDH rec page for Magda, I was looking at other decklists that people have created and I was seeing so many artifact cards and not enough dragons so I went super heavy on the dragons with this deck. This deck is all about getting big dragons, really big splashy red dragons that just beat face into play and it is so much fun. So let's get into the deck list. Let's start off with the ramp. I'm a little bit lighter on the ramp for this deck because while this is like a dwarf dragon tribal deck and a lot of the dragons are super high converted mana cost, our commander is super cheap. Most of our dwarves are cheap. We're not really hoping to cast our dragons, like hard cast them. So we really don't need that much mana. So we're playing an arcane signet, a fire diamond, a mind stone, a soul ring, and a star compass and a thought vessel for the mana rocks. And there are some other ways we have of making mana um, that have some other synergy with the decks. So we've got Cultivator's Caravan. It's a vehicle that we have to tap any number of creatures with total power three or more to turn this vehicle into an artifact creature that can attack. And we can tap it to add any color to our mana pool. So our commander cares about dwarves being tapped. And whenever we do so, we can make a treasure token that kind of fuels her last ability. So Cultivator's Caravan has some extra synergy without letting us tap down our dwarves without, you know, making them attack because maybe they'll die in combat and we can't use them later to make more treasure. So crewing vehicles is a really cool way of tapping down those dwarves and i've seen a lot of decks deck lists for magda focusing really heavily on that vehicle but man i just love dragons so much so that's what i focused on but i still feel like this is good in the deck because it makes mana along those same lines we have springleaf drum we can tap it and tap an untapped creature we control to add one mana of any color again it can turn any of our dwarves into a mana dork so we can tap the dwarf for mana and if we have our commander out we can make a treasure too which getting you know two sources of mana for one artifact that's super cheap really good for the deck. In addition to those, I'm also playing an Iron Mirror. It's it's a two mana mana dork. It can tap for red. I, I feel like we can take as many of the two mana mana rocks or mana dorks that we can get in a deck like this. So I think it's fine in the deck, but if you want to cut it for a big splashy dragon, totally understand. Now let's get into the dwarves for the deck. So I've kind of separated these dwarves into two separate categories. I feel like most of them really do fall into one of these two categories. We've got the useful dwarves that have some type of ability on them that is useful for gameplay. And the other ones that are just dwarves that have a really good personality that are just, you know, sweet spirits. You know, we're glad they're here. They make treasures. We can, you know, turn those treasures into dragons, but they really don't do much else outside of that. What I think is super funny about dwarves, and this is different from a lot of other tribes, is they are all dwarven something for the most part. So I think that's kind of cool. Already contradicting what I just said about all the dwarves being dwarven something, we've got Axgard Cavalry. This is a new dwarf from Kaldheim. We can tap it to give any creature haste until the end of turn. Pretty useful. We then have Blood Fire Dwarf, which we can sacrifice to deal one damage to each creature without flying. We also have Bomb Squad, which has a lot of text on it, but we can tap it to put fuse counters on a creature, and that's good so we can basically tap it 
to make a treasure. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, we put a fuse counter on each creature with a fuse counter on it. And whenever a creature has four or more fuse counters on it, we remove all of it, destroy it, and then that creature is going to deal four damage to its controller. So a lot of text there really is just in here to make treasures, honestly. We then have Dwarven Armorer, which can let us pay a red and tap it to discard a card from our hand to give a creature a zero one or a plus one plus oh counter, which is kind of useful. But again, it can tap itself and that's good. It can make a treasure. We also have Dwarven Berserker, which gets a pretty significant power buff if it's blocked. So that's useful. And then we have quite possibly the best dwarf in the entire deck with Dwarven Blood Boiler. We can tap an untapped dwarf we control to give target creature plus two plus O until end of turn. So this is a fantastic way of tapping down our dwarves for, you know, treasures at instant speed. And we can pump up one of our dragons super big if we need to with this ability or just any one of our dwarves for that matter. We then have Dwarven Lieutenant, which has a fire breathing type ability that it can give to dwarves. So we can give a dwarf plus one plus O until end of turn. We then have Dwarven Miner, which is a super mean card. We can pay three mana and tap it to destroy target non-basic land. We then have Dwarven Recruiter, which is very familiar to all the other recruiter cards for tribes. So when it enters the battlefield, we can search our library for any number of dwarf cards and put them on top of our library after we've shuffled, of course, which is really useful because one problem that could probably happen with this deck and probably will happen a lot is you're going to have a bunch of dragons in your hand, which isn't super helpful because you can't really tutor them from your hand. Magda only pulls them from your library. So being able to stack our library with dwarves to make sure we don't actually draw any dragons is actually pretty useful. We then have Dwarven Warrior which can tap to give a creature with power two or less unblockable until the end of turn. We then have Fearless Liberator, which is another brand new dwarf. It has a super cool boast ability. If it has attacked this turn, we can pay two in red to make a two one red dwarf berserker creature token, which is awesome because that will further fuel Magda, giving us more and more treasures and helping us get to that five treasure threshold so we can start cheating out dragons. We then have Pardic Miner, which we can sacrifice to prevent a player from playing lands this turn, which is honestly kind of brutal. If you're playing against a green player that's got like a bunch of ways of playing extra lands for turn, that's pretty cool. And then we've got Spark Mage, which when it deals combat damage to a player, we can have Spark Mage deal one damage to target creature that player controls, which doesn't seem like a lot, but maybe they can pick off some mana dorks or maybe a Birds of Paradise or something like that. Kind of cool. And this next one, something doesn't look quite right about it. I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me. I don't, I don't know. It's Tarian Mauler. Uh, it's a 2-2. Two, two, and whenever an opponent casts a spell, we can put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Kind of looks like a weird dwarf, but I guess it is a dwarf. So it's going in the deck. And then we're playing Vault Robber, which is going to let us pay one and tap it to exile a creature card from our graveyard to make a treasure token. And then we are playing Torbrand Thane of Redfell because man, look at that beard. How could you not put that in a dwarf deck? And if a red source we control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it is going to deal that much damage plus two instead. All right, now let's go over the dwarves that really just have a good personality. I'm not really gonna say what they do. They, they're in here just because we need dwarves. So we've got Dwarven Grunt, Dwarven Nomad, Dwarven Scorcher, Dwarven Trader, Dwarven Weaponsmith, Enslaved Dwarf, Rimrock Knight, Liberated Dwarf, and then we are playing seven of the seven dwarves. I am very excited to put seven of the same creature in a commander deck. It just feels super cool. So seven dwarves, and they also do get plus one plus one for each other creature named seven dwarves that we control. So maybe they don't deserve to be in this category, but having seven seven dwarves, I feel like is kind of a meme and belongs in this category. Okay, so let's go over the juicy part of this deck, the deck, the part of the deck I am most excited about, and it is the dragons. And as you can tell by the title of this video, there is one dragon above them all that I love, and that is Dracuseth Ma of Flames. I just love the art on this card. It just looks like that really classic, cool dragon that you were obsessed with when you were like in middle school and like would look at those dragon books and stuff. I don't know, maybe that was just me, but I really feel like Dracuseth embodies that really draconic vibe and I love it. So whenever it attacks, it's going to deal four damage to any target and three damage to each of up to two other targets. So it can fling out like seven points of extra damage in addition to, you know, being a seven, seven. It's brutal. I love Dracuseth. We then have Hellkite Charger, which has flying in haste. So, and when Hellkite Charger attacks, we can pay five and two red. So seven mana total. And if we do, we get to untap all of our attacking creatures and take an additional combat phase. So I'm pretty sure if we have seven dwarves out and our opponents can't block and kill them, we can take infinite turns as long as we can make enough treasures to sacrifice to keep paying for the Hellkite Charger ability to untap everything. So that's pretty cool. We then have Hellkite Tyrant, which is a super expensive dragon uh, price-wise. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we are going to gain control of all of that player's artifacts. And at the beginning of our turn, if we have 20 or more artifacts, we're just going to win the game. 
We then have Null Spine Dragon, which when it comes into play, we can discard our hand and draw cards equal to the damage dealt to target opponent this turn. I really like the play pattern with this. We can swing out with our dwarves, deal a bunch of damage to our opponents. Maybe we've already got another dragon or two out. We can sacrifice the treasures that we made, bring out Null Spine Dragon, and discard our hand and draw a bunch of cards and refill our hand for, you know, playing more dwarves or, you know, finding cards that we need to interact with our opponents. We then have Rapacious Dragon, which when it comes into play, will make us two treasure tokens. So that already gets us almost halfway to what we need to get another dragon into play. We then have another pricey dragon with Scourge of the Throne. It has the defense thrown ability and when it attacks for the first time each turn if it's attacking the player with the most life or tied for the most life we can untap all attacking creatures and take an additional combat phase so this is really powerful next up we have steel hellkite which we can pay x and destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost x or less whose controller was dealt combat damage by steel hellkite this turn so we can only activate this once per turn and after we've hit somebody but we can really do a lot of damage to somebody's board and just wipe everything away on top of them getting hit by a massive dragon so that's cool we then have Spawn of Thraxis, which when it enters a battlefield is going to deal damage to target a creature or player equal to the number of mountains we control. And spoiler alert, we are playing a lot of mountains in this deck. We're then playing Bogarden Hellkite, which when it enters a battlefield is going to be able to divide 5 damage as we choose among any number of creatures and or players. So 5 damage isn't a ton, but being able to wipe away a bunch of small creatures is pretty useful. We're then playing Furyborn Hellkite, and it has Bloodthirst 6, so if an opponent was dealt damage this turn, this creature enters a battlefield with six plus one plus one counters on it. So this can become a 12-12 if we have dealt any damage to any of our opponents when it comes into play. It's very strong dragon. And then the last dragon that we're playing is Utvara Hellkite, which is so good in this deck. Whenever a dragon that we control attacks, we get to make a 6-6 six, six red dragon creature token with flying. This is just going to get out of control with what this deck is trying to do and is such a powerful dragon. And we are only playing a total of 12 dragons, which is isn't a tremendous amount. I didn't really want to play so many that we would keep having them getting stuck in our hands because that feels really bad and, and wanted to avoid that, but I wanted to pack it full of the strongest dragons possible. So I feel like I did a decent job of doing that. All right, so let's look at the ways that this deck has of drawing cards. I, there aren't a ton of ways. I, th I think I'm playing like six or seven if you include some of the dragons that are in the deck. This deck is pretty light on card draw, but that's because we really don't want to be drawing too many cards because that just in further increases the chances of us hitting a dragon that's probably going to get stuck in our hand. But we are playing Smuggler's Copter. It's another vehicle that has some synergy with our commander, and whenever Smuggler's Copter attacks or blocks, we can draw a card and discard a card. We are also playing a Faithless Looting and a Wheel of Misfortune to help us get some more cards into our hand. And we are also playing Valika Awakening, which I really like in this deck. So we can put any number of cards from our hand on the bottom of our library and then draw that many cards plus one. And it is an MDFC, so it is a land on the other side. But what I like about this is first off, it's an instant speed. It's pretty low converted mana cost for what it does. And we can put a lot of the dragons or maybe some lands that are stuck in our hand and not doing us any good on the bottom of our library, draw some more cards, and then we can just tutor those dragons out with our commander later in the game. We're also playing a Brass's Bounty, which doesn't draw us cards, but is going to make us a ridiculous amount of treasure tokens, and then our commander is going to be able to turn those treasure tokens into dragons. So let's go over some of the ways we have of dealing with our opponent's threats. We're not playing a ton because we're playing on smashing face with dragons, and that's what I really want this deck to do, but we are playing in a Braid, a Chaos Warp, a Comet Storm, a Lightning Bolt, a Blasphemous Act, a by force that can blow up a bunch of our opponent's artifacts and a chain lightning and i know that chain lightning and lightning bolt aren't super great in commander but i think you'd be surprised how many times three damage is actually enough to kill a lot of prob problematic creatures in the format so i think they're actually pretty good in the deck and with all of that out of the way we can go over the mana base which is super easy super simple we're just going to be playing 35 basic mountains i did go a little bit over the budget that i typically like to do on decks with some of these dragons so i just felt like we had to be budget somewhere and the mana base is where we're going to be taking our budget out but honestly that's really all the deck needs is about 35 mountains there are some utility lands you can put in but i don't feel like they make the deck significantly stronger i, f I feel like spending that money on on dragons is, is probably better for the deck overall so 
And that is my how to train your Dracuseth deck. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck deck and I really hope you enjoy playing this deck. It, I really feel like this deck embodies really well what Commander is all about and that is just playing super big splashy cards and Magda does such a good job of making those things viable by just tutoring the dragons out into play. And let me know down in the comment section below if you would have preferred an artifact build on this because I could definitely do that too but I just kind of felt dragons was way more attractive. So again, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. And just a couple quick reminders here in the close that if you are interested in purchasing any of the cards in this deck or just purchasing this deck outright, you can take the list that's in the description for this video and put it into game grid and buy these cards if you're interested in that. And if you're interested in becoming a Patreon and supporting us directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash commandadeli to sign up for that. You'll get access to our Discord exclusive content, merch, and a bunch of other perks. We have a ton of fun on our Discord and we really appreciate all of our subscribers and all of our Patreons. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you have an amazing weekend.